Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Olivia Hope. I'm a culture coordinator for the city of St. Catharines, and we're very excited to present to you in partnership with the Niagara Regional Native Center, the 2020 City of St. Catharines annual juried exhibit, More Than Words, Truth and Reconciliation. Before we begin, I would like to uh, start off this meeting with a land acknowledgement. Thanks, Olivia. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that the land on which we meet today is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples, Acknowledging this is a reminder that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendship of Indigenous people. Unmuted, sorry. <laughs> um, one moment. Thank you, Kathy. Um, now I'd like to introduce Joe Schwana. Joe is the cultural resource coordinator for the Niagara Regional Native Center, um, and he will start off our evening with a traditional opening. So welcome, Joe. Hello, everybody. My name is Joseph Schwana. I work at the Niagara Regional Native Center. I am 21 years old and I am an Anishinaabe man. Um, I have been asked to do a traditional opening and I'm going to speak in my language, the Anishina, the Anishina Moan language, and um, it's going to be an Anamewin, it's going to be a prayer. Um, this prayer was taught to me by my grandfather who attended residential school and my great grandfather who attended residential school and it's been passed down in the family ever since. So this prayer is very sacred to my family and many people in this area. So um, now. I'll begin. Miigwech Mishomis, Ogibi Wasayaj in Nungum. Miigwech Ninkin Nungum Kishkok, where when a Jimmy Nombamada Shiganoganok. Miigwech Keshkakamikwe, Ogimijang Bish, Ogimijang Mijim, Ogimijang Wesniak, Ogimijang Nesewen. Meanwhile, Ogimijang Pomadzuin. Sema Kibigedna, Wabno, Jauno. Epengishmuk, Minwa, Gidwedno. Narmoshinji Mashko Gabuyan, Minwa, Zongade AI. Aho, Miguach Mishomis. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, now I'd like to invite Mayor Senzik to say a few words. Thank you very much, Olivia. It is an absolute honor to be here today. And I just want to first start by thanking Olivia, Kathleen, and the cultural services team for launching the annual juried exhibit virtually. You know, we're doing a lot of things differently this year. And this is another example of the innovation and ingenuity that the team has brought to life in a visual sense. And Considering the, the visual nature of, of what we're seeing today, the visual arts, this is a, a, a great demonstration of the team's commitment to continuing to bring to life the visual arts in meaningful ways. And I also wanna say congratulations to the cultural services team and to the First Ontario Performing Arts Center for placing first in Canada for the number of cultural events staged for this year's Culture Days. Uh, between September 25th and October 25th, a total of 197 events were hosted online and in person across the city. And that made us number one, and that gave us a national ranking. So to the entire team, thank you very much for what you're doing to ensure that even during these uncertain times, 
that we're in today, that the culture and the arts that surround us continues to be alive and vibrant. The opening of this exhibit, More Than Words, is a powerful example of how, our, how we are celebrating and sharing the culture of our First Nations community. And art is indeed a universal language. The pieces on display present the opportunity for us to learn about First Nations culture in a way that is more powerful than words. And what we've seen with the celebration of nations that has taken place for the last four years at the First Ontario Performing Arts Centre, when we see it come to life, the First Nations, Métis and Inuit cultures come to life on the stage and in teachings and in learnings through dance and through music and through food, we understand more fully uh, the impact that First Nations who were here long before the settlers have had in shaping the community that surrounds us. This exhi exhibit is a testament to the City of St. Catherine's commitment in its, in its walking the path of truth and reconciliation. And we have our memorandum of understanding with the Niagara Region Native Center. And I wanna thank Sabrina for her, her in, in involvement, her in, in being invested in the organization of this year's juried art exhibit from the, from the start. And Sabrina is a member of the Niagara Region, Niagara Region Native Center. And I just wanna say thank you on, on behalf of council for your involvement, as well as Joseph for the opening the opening remarks, the traditional opening as well in his participation in the closing that we'll, we'll be hearing coming up. And as the cultural resource coordinator for the NAG region, Nada Center, it's in looking forward to working with Joseph and his team as we continue to learn more and become more vested in the, the relationship between First Nations and the city of St. Catharines. The pieces that you're going to be seeing, they're installed on the public corridor, the third floor of City Hall. And I'm hoping that there will be in the near future an opportunity for more people to, to see these works because I had an opportunity to see them as they were being hung. And I can say that they're absolutely amazing. They're impactful. Uh, they give you pause for thought. And I think that's what art does many times is it stops you and it forces you to think. And I think that's where this exhibit is so, so powerful because it's more than just words, it's beyond the words. And the visualization that is on those walls is a representation of our commitment to truth and reconciliation as a city, but it's also our commitment to a better understanding of our First Nations brothers and sisters. So I know that there will be days in the future where we'll be able to come together, but where we are today, this vir virtual exchange is just another way that we can share if you will, in the visualization of how people in our community see the First Nations and the impact that they're, they have and will have had on our community. So I just wanna thank the artists and congratulate them for selection. And Olivia, you're doing an amazing job, keep it up. Thank you, Mayor Sensek, for your kind and encouraging words. We truly appreciate it. Um, so this year's juried exhibit, More Than Words, Truth and Reconciliation, was ignited by call to action number 83 from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada Calls to Action, um, which asks both Indigenous and non-Indigenous artists to undertake collaborative projects and produce works that contribute to the reconciliation process. Uh, I ran with this call to action and set to work in collaboration with the Niagara Regional Native Center, also known as um, NRNC, with the help of Sabrina Shwana, the Urban Indigenous Homeward Bound Coordinator, we were able to host a very engaging jury, um, and we were also able to pick some amazing pieces for display. Many of these works engage with the truths of Indigenous experiences in Canada and address meaningful reconciliation. Along with Sabrina's assistance during the jurying, she was also able to supervise the development of responses by NRNC's youth committee to several of the artworks on display. So I'm so happy that we're going to be able to discuss these responses um, as during this opening as they add an additional and necessary layer to this exhibition and to reconciliation as a whole. The goal of this exhibit is to educate and inspire both artists and the community to continue to put the calls to action into action and to affect change. Um, so the opening will go as follows. I will call upon each artist to speak about their work for a few moments. 
After, our, after the artist has spoken about their work, we will then present a response that was developed by the Niagara Regional Native Center Youth Committee under Sabrina's supervision. Once that is complete, we will then move on to the next artist and the pattern will continue. So without further ado, the first piece on display um, is by Stephen Ramis. It is a digital print titled The Land Acknowledgement. And unfortunately, Steve wasn't able to make it to the meeting to the opening today. So I'm going to read about his piece. Just one moment. Let me pull it up. Steve told me he once asked Mendelssohn Joe, the infamous contrarian Canadian artist, for an artist statement. And Joe told him this statement that his statement was, look at the art. Steve's piece is pretty much an artist statement in itself but he hopes people might read it and nuance their thinking in a bit, thinking a bit about land acknowledgements and the assumptions many of us seem to be making about identity politics. In response to this, the um, Niagara Regional Native Center Youth Committee said that they respect that the artist captured the true words and feelings of indigenous people. Um, Sabrina, I'm not sure if you want to add on to this at all or if you'll be a silent viewer. <laughs> I prefer to be a silent entity. Okay, not a problem. <laughs> All right, so then we will move on to the next piece. So the next piece on display is by Francie McLinn. It's a mixed media piece titled Truth and Reconciliation. Francie, if you could please say a few words. And we'll make sure you're unmuted. There you go. You're still muted. <laughs> there should be something popping up for you. Okay, I've got there it. You can go. hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Um, hi, everyone. I'd like to thank you, Olivia, uh, and everyone who was involved in putting this um, show together. This piece is very important to me, and I'm really grateful to be here. I was born in St. Catharines. I grew up in Meriton. Uh, I have a BA with a major in fine arts from the University of Waterloo and a teaching degree from Brock University. Um, my first 10 years of teaching were spent in the Yukon Territory. Um, and that's where I met uh, a particular indigenous child named Jolie Robson. She was a beautiful child. She was tall, athletic, funny. She was infuriating at times. She was loving and she was highly intelligent. If you ever met her, you wouldn't forget her. I taught her for two years in grade four and grade six. Years later, I found that Jolie hung her, hanged herself in a white horse jail cell when she was 23 years old. Her body was returned to her people in Saskatchewan where the women elders renamed her Blue Feather Eagle Woman. Two years after, her, after she died, her husband um, organized a music festival in Whitehorse called the Blue Feather Music Festival, and it was going on to this day in her memory. So this uh, mixed media piece called Truth and Reconciliation was done to honor the memory of the child that I knew, whose spirit became Blue Feather Eagle Woman. Some First Nations people in the prairies honor the sun, so that's what I started with. The big uh, yellow face in the center represents the sun. Um, the heavy red dress at the bottom um, is the, the dress of truth. Um, and the sun god carries that heavy red dress every day uh, across the sky. And you can see the pain that it causes him. He's got great distress on his face. The stones that hang from the top of the, um, of the rays of the sun, they represent reconciliation. The top stone is the stone of acceptance. Because when I started asking people what reconciliation would look like, that was the one word that everybody, whether they were Indigenous or non-Indigenous, said. Um, so I decided that the first one had to be named acceptance. The second stone from the top um, revealed its name to me in a quite a surprising way. 
a friend who was a nurse in Nunavut put me in touch with an, uh, an elder uh, who lives in um, uh, Rankin Inlet. She's an artist. And as I was working on this project, um, Lavinia Brown and I were messaging each other constantly. She went to residential school, and yet she was the one that made me hopeful about this journey that we're all on. And when she wrote to me and said, we will find the words that will bring healing, I knew right then that the second stone, the name of the second stone was healing. And um, the name of the last stone is hope. Thank you. Thank you, Francie. Um, there was no response developed by NRNC on this piece, so we're just going to move on to the next one. Uh, the next piece is by Holly Iconopolis Rares. Uh, it's a photography piece titled Through the Eyes of Eagles. This piece was coordinated with assistance from Kelsey Dick during the 2019-2020 school year at Soaring Eagles School. Kelsey will now speak on behalf of both Holly and the project. Hello everyone. Holly has asked me to share on her behalf. I've had the great honor of teaching Holly during the last few school years. Holly is a Métis youth and is in grade 12 at the Soaring Eagle Secondary Indigenous Program and lives in the Niagara region. Holly shares that she enjoys creating artwork because it allows her to tell stories and she has also had some other pieces of art on display at Rodman Hall. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action for education. Call upon education systems to utilize Indigenous knowledge and teaching methods within classrooms in consultation with communities. As Indigenous youth, we all need a place within the education system that brings us peace some place where we can go for silent reflection and prayer to help maintain our mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being. A place to reconnect with Mother Earth and to continue to develop a sense of pride by seeing ourselves as Indigenous youth reflected within the learning environment. The photography collage entitled Through the Eyes of Eagles reflects the school experience of the students who attend the Soaring Eagles program in partnership with the Niagara Regional Native Center and their experiences that they value the most through photography. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kelsey and Holly as well. Um, sorry. So this piece reminded the youth committee of how beautiful the world is from the eyes of creator. When you take away any, when you take away all the ugliness, humanity interferes with it. So next on display is a work by Rhiannon Berry. It's an acrylic on canvas titled We Rise Together. Rhiannon will now say a few words about her piece. Hello. Um, first, I just want to say thank you to all the staff for working on this and also congratulations to all the other artists. I feel very lucky to be included. Um, I first created this as a response to a call from the Ordinary Friendship Center in August. Um, it was um, a call um, for pieces on uh, murdered and missing Indigenous women and children. And this was something that um, it means a lot to me. Uh, it's affected me whenever I've read anything about it or um, been to um, just heard speakers speaking about it. And so it was something I, I wanted to uh, put down on canvas, my feelings, but I just didn't have the opportunity. But this call was really welcoming. And uh, so I painted it and uh, I was really happy with how it turned out. Um, I grew up on the North Shore of Lake Superior next to a First Nations Reserve. And I just recall the exposure to culture very early. Um, large drums were set up in our gym. I remember the reverberations almost through my body, through my soul, it felt like. 
And so I always had a curiosity. And as I grew um, into my youth, um, I learned more about the pain, um, some healing, but also the systemic um, issues and the racism um, with, with, um, within the culture. And uh, I just learned, I, I immersed myself in learning a lot about what was going on. So um, this is my artist statement for this piece. Um, by exploring the idea of empowerment, as it pertains to the theme of truth and reconciliation, I hope to communicate a sense of hope with this painting. I believe that ensuring that younger generations are raised to know historical truths will ensure pride, strength, and will continue to change the narrative. I believe that Indigenous women and girls will continue to be encouraged to pursue positions in where they can become change makers in Canadian culture and society. And in my painting, I provide tranquility and peace above the horizon line and separate it from the chaotic lower half by applying red and copper pigments. The horizon line makes mention to the highway of tears. Red is applied throughout all the layers, acknowledging the innocent blood spilt now and throughout history. And below is a gathering of spirits. These spirits are guided out of the spirit world by a dancer dancing a path. Each is becoming aware of this guide at just the precise time that they are destined to become aware. Some may take longer than others based on the severity of their trauma or how long they have been in rest. The spirits may appear to be confused and disoriented about why they are being called upon to rise. The steadfast guide has already risen nine spirits and those have transformed into large birds bringing wisdom, truth, hope courage and strength for the continued work ahead. Thank you, Rihanna. Uh, so Anna and C's response by the youth committee was that they see this piece as a good conversation starter on awareness. So that's great. Next on display, we have Jillian Dixon. Uh, this piece is an oil on canvas titled Hope. Jillian has asked that I say a few words on this piece. Divisions between people, whether nations, religions, races, or even people in the next village can last for years, decades, and even centuries. In this abstract painting, Jillian tried to meld together the two sides of a truth and reconciliation endeavor by using shapes and colors and blending them into one harmonious whole. Finding agreement that concludes with a reconciliation is very hard when memories, histories, injustices, and reparation are not always agreed on or willing to be agreed upon. In this painting, Jillian tried in an abstract way to show the coming together of two groups in order to establish a reconciliation. Some parts of the painting do not seem to be completely resolved because finding the truth and a reconciliation is hard and all that can be done is to look, listen, and hope to improve on all past attempts that can be made at reconciliation. Um, the youth committee in response to this piece noted that reconciliation doesn't just rest on the shoulders of indigenous peoples, it will truly take meaningful effort from everyone involved to come to a better understanding. And now we'll move forward to the next piece. So next on display is a work by Kim Bell. This is a mixed media on canvas uh, piece titled Path Towards Healing. Kim Bell has asked me to say a few words on this piece. Correct, Kim? <laughs> yes, she has. Um, okay, so Kim focused on the continuing inaction to intercede on behalf of Canada's Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls, MMIWG. Although her artwork is directed, she believes its message of tell, hear, act, heal may be adopted for many Indigenous issues. Tell, welcome the Indigenous community to share their truths. Here, listen to these truths in person, podcast, multimedia, and print. Act, acknowledge empathy, share apologies, and celebrate our cultural diversity. Inspired by Native Women's Association of Canada's Faceless Dolls Project, here Indigenous women are changed like, chained like paper dolls of a childhood often lost. They're faceless, dressed in white, depicting their ghost-like invisibility to justice. They stand before a community quilt of indigenous colors, holding hands in unity. 
Two symbols are of importance, an upside down maple leaf representing an apologizing nation shedding its tears and a red handprint across one mouth representing the violence that affects indigenous women. Kim is hopeful that her contribution to this exhibit will lead the viewer to research and question what has happened in the past, identify an injustice that has touched them personally, seeking a way which they can take meaningful steps along the path of truth and reconciliation. For NRNC's response, um, this piece, pieces of the quilt represent the community and that to the youth committee signifies the importance of all of us having to contribute to reconciliation. Next, we have a piece that was created by the Soaring Eagles School Group. The piece is made up of painted masks and is titled, We Are Not a Conquered People. This work was completed with the assistance of Peter Beacon, Associate Professor of Visual Arts, Faculty of Education, Brock University. Peter will now say a few words about this piece. Okay. Thank you, Olivia. First of all, I'd like to thank the Cultural Services Department of the City of St. Catharines for the hard work that they always put into the various projects that they undertake. And this is yet another example of that. So thank you, Olivia, Michelle, and Kathleen. Um, it's an honor to have a few moments to speak to this piece. This is just one piece of artwork that was created by the students at Soaring Eagles Alternative School, which is a school in Thorold that's a partnership between the Niagara Catholic District School Board and the Niagara Regional Native Center. And about three years ago, I, I was working with the teacher who you met earlier, um, Kelsey Dick, and um, I presented to them the idea of using visual arts as a vehicle to, to express their views and their opinions on the, the calls to action, the 94 calls to action that were put out in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report in 2015. I did a number of workshops on different materials that they could use, we did paintings, we did um, sculptures, and then I brought in these various mask forms. And we questioned what could we do with these to have the most impact um, given the task at hand as youth today in 2017, three years ago, and what the calls to action meant to them, indigenous youth. And they came up with this incredibly powerful statement um, on 26 masks and I think the visuals don't make it justice. So please try to get to City Hall to see the impact of this installation. We are not a conquered people. This installation has already been shown in a number of venues. It was in Rodman Hall Art Center for an exhibition. It was at the Performing Arts Center, downtown St. Catharines. And now it um, has a spot in our City Hall downtown. Um, mixed media are the materials they use, acrylic paints on it. and. Um, I think that's about all I want to say right now. I want to congratulate all the students that worked on this. It was a group effort. It took them a number of days to complete this. And I think they created a very powerful um, installation. So thank you, Olivia. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, so the youth committee believes that it is crucial for youth to grow up in resistance, to know and understand their history and to make a better tomorrow. So next on display, we have a work by Melanie Pike. This piece is an acrylic and oil on canvas and is titled Open Water. So now we'll pass it over to Melanie. Hi, um, I painted this piece in 2019 with the Water for National Art exhibition in mind. Um, so this painting was in Mexico last November. And so um, it's really, its intention was to be really cross-cultural, um, specific for indigenous people, but for all cultures, I wanted this image to be easily read and understood as a metaphor. Um, so the art exhibition focused on water preservation and um, preserving our resources, um, but it's the hand uh, metaphor for love and forgiveness um, as well. So it really, it seemed like a good fit for this exhibit as well. Um, I'll just read the artist statement that I had written here um, to kind of explain the, the metaphor a little bit and what it means. So um, 
when our hearts like these hands and listen to others in humility and the act set of hands buying water to flow into another set of hands represents an act of love or kindness um, going from one person to another so the cupped hands receiving the the water going um, in down to the next so um the vast ocean seems overwhelming um it's infinite you can't see the end of it um but just a drop of kindness just a drop in the bucket can make such a huge difference in ways that we don't even know um so a kind act that seems small can have a ripple effect and, and a broad impact so by setting aside our differences and spreading love and kindness instead being open to other people's ideas having the humility to just open your heart open your hands and receive other people's ideas and thoughts and and acts of kindness as well these things help bring healing and forgiveness between people and cultures and um if we all just make an effort to be a little more uh kind in small ways then it helps to open up a brighter future in the long run thanks thank you melanie um this piece reminded the youth committee of cleansing and giving new life and how we don't hold more than we need so uh, next on display, we have a piece by Irma Bull. It's a mixed media piece titled Healing Spirits. And now, Irma, if you could please say a few words on your piece. You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> How's that? There you go. Perfect. I must say, I have so enjoyed all of the, the pieces. It was just wonderful to see it. Now, when I was in high school, like way back in the last century, there was a boy in my class from Moussigny. He was a very kind and gentle uh, kid. And he told me that his sisters and uh, he could not go home for Christmas. And I thought to myself, like, what kind of a mother could send their children so far away and not have them back for the holidays? So when the truth of the residential schools uh, came out, I was compelled to do another piece of art uh, and I did this poem at the back, and now I'm experimenting to put the poem at the front. So I will read the, uh, the poem. The poem itself is called The Dream Catchers. Mother, grandmother, you were the dream catchers. Standing tall in the circle of all living things, sending down deep roots into the earth with the teaching of the ancestors. You cradled your children in a place of love and taught them courage to dance in the wind, to drum reverence for all life, to be one with the spirit of earth and sky. We saw, but did not understand. In our blindness, we judged your ways as savage. So we took your children far away, imprisoning their souls, and you could no longer shelter them you could no longer be the dream catcher. Mother, grandmother, you have been wronged and we ask forgiveness. What has hurt you has diminished us. As mothers, grandmothers, we reach out to you from the heart to join hands and reconcile with compassion, truth and honor for we are equals. We celebrate what makes us different, but the same. Let us reclaim our true power, the power of peace. Standing in a circle together, open to the wisdom of our hearts, joined as one with the great spirit of earth and sky, we are strengthened and renewed. We, we are the dream catchers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Irma. Um, the youth committee said that women are often the backbone of our communities. It's a powerful notion to have us unite to lead reconciliation. Next on display, we have a piece by Marge Durant. <clears throat> it's an acrylic on canvas titled Healing. Um, 
Marge has asked that I say a few words on this piece. Healing depicts ghost figures of small children who had been taken away from their families and placed in residential schools. Seen in the background, the indigenous women, woman is releasing a white dove to signify change or peace. Marge noted that the Beatles song Blackbirds came to mind when doing this painting. The blackbird singing in the dead of night, take these broken wings and learn to fly. To Marge, it seems so relevant. And so she decided to incorporate them in this piece as well. Um, NRC did not develop a response to this piece. So we're gonna move on to the next one. So next on display, it's an acrylic on canvas by Jill Lunn titled, We Are Co-Pilots. Jill will now say a few words. You're muted, Jill. Sorry, sorry, you're muted. <laughs> oh, Can you, you hear me now? Sorry, yep. I've had like ongoing issues with my Wi-Fi this evening. So just, um, thanks for including my piece in the in the display. Um, it's not nearly as deep as everybody else's is, but thank you anyways. Um, this is an album cover for a 14 um, song concept album that um, my husband who's in right in the middle of the um, kind of a reminiscent of a medicine wheel. So it represents um, different stages of healing and um, it's represented by the seasons. So this one starts in the fall, the winter, the spring, and then the summer and all the, the songs go along with that. And then of course, um, the different areas in the background um, in this, when you see it up close, there's a lot of crackles and a lot of um, texture in it. And that talks about our, our textures and our uh, finding our way in life. And in the fall, there's a, the wishes are blowing away, which was important to us. Um, what this piece is, it, of course, it's about that story, that healing story. But for Ryan and I, it was how uh, we chose to reconcile our past and leaving that behind and the two of us um, reconciling our past and being together. And for me, it was reconciling that with, um, I guess, the non-native people. And I just chose to leave all that behind and just move on and uh, live in the mainstream and find my own way with Ryan. So that's what that piece is about. Thanks. Thank you, Jill. Um, sorry, just a moment. So the youth committee noted that this piece is powerful because we often talk about the physical, emotional, spiritual, and mental aspects, but often forget that human is in the middle and all those elements are equally needed to be whole. Great job, Jill. Next on display, we have a piece by Arnold McVeigh. This piece is toner transfer and found items on Birch and, is and it is titled Birch Poems Witness. Unfortunately, Arnold could not attend the opening, so I will say a few words on his piece. This piece was inspired by Ojibwe artist, Carl Beam. The piece is a visual poem in three graphic verses that reminds us that human presence in nature, and in this particular case, settler culture, always assumes the form of violation, abuse, and the silencing of indigenous cultures and nature. The youth committee in response to this piece said that if this tree could talk, it would tell us what life was like before assimilation. It rem would remind us of how we need to act to move forward. Thank you. Uh, and then last but not least, we have an acrylic on canvas by Rajri Jenna and it's titled Respect. And I will now pass over um, to Rajri. Hello everyone. I'm honored to be chosen to talk today in front of you all. Let me first introduce myself. I'm Rajri with a background of uh, art and architecture, blessed with two girls and so supportive husband. This painting was taken from a powwow festival. We had went for the first time. And um, this uh, shows um, a man paying respect in the ceremonial performance 
And I believe that intris intrinsically, all cultures do have a basic similarities in terms of richness, depth, emotion, and spirituality. Now, I think it is our time to assimilate. Only by erasing the ignorance, we see the true beauty of the culture, the kind, and the humble hearts who lived it. And the plight in this new world where values are surviving, struggling to survive. I would like to end by saying the root of this land is very vital for the fruitful future of all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Rajri. The youth committee said that this is um, it's an, it, that it's nice that people can people still can see. Still see. Okay. I'm just gonna mute. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. Um, so the youth committee said that it's nice that people can still see the beauty of our culture despite the stereotypes we face every day. This ideology will be critical to reconciliation. Sorry, I have tickle. <laughs> okay. So that concludes the works from this year's 2020 annual juried exhibit. More than words, truth and reconciliation. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Unfortunately, Joe's phone, I think, died. So he won't be able to give us um, a closing, a traditional closing. So, <clears throat> wow. So I'm just gonna go on with closing us out. <clears throat> I'd like to say thank you to the mayor for saying a few words. I thank you to Joe for the traditional opening. Um, Niawe Magwitch, thank you to everyone for viewing, to the Niagara Regional Native Center for your partnership, and to all the artists that submitted, um, as well as Sabrina Shwana, of course. Um, without your support and contributions, this would not be possible. <clears throat> so anyways, I just wanna wish everyone to have a great night and a safe and amazing weekend. Anagi, goodbye um and i hope to see you all in the future oh and also if you'd like to view the exhibit more information will be on um st catherine slash exhibit website within the coming weeks how you can um, go and view the site in a safe um and socially distance manner so again thank you all for coming goodbye have a thank great you. night bye thank you